Hello, everyone. I'm Sean Dubrovac. I'm the chief economist for the Consumer Technology Association and author of Digital Destiny. I'm here with the president of GoPro, Tony Bates. I am super excited about this conversation, talking about disruptive technology. Uh, GoPro is a member of CTA's Disruptive Technology Council. Uh, so, so, Tony, uh, a few weeks ago, I took my sons to see the new movie, Point Break, the remake of the, of the old classic. And uh, it, it shows some high action video footage. So very early in the, into the movie, my youngest son turns to me and says, one, one word, GoPro. Wow. And, and I knew you know, that his association right there, GoPro for him was a verb, it was a noun. It wasn't necessarily just a company, but it was a complete association with high intensity uh, action um, footage. And so I really saw in that moment that how GoPro had completely disrupted the paradigm, not just changing what we do and how we do it, but even the way we talk about it and how we think about it. Tell me a little bit about how we got here. How did GoPro change so much so quickly? Yeah, I think that's a, a great story that resonates with a lot of our, our customers and consumers. And what you're really talking about, I think when you think of GoPro, uh, you associate first with the content, with the footage. Uh, and, and the essence of the GoPro story is very simple, that our founder uh, essentially wanted to get great footage of surfing shots. And at the time, it was really around uh, beautiful landscapes. But it, what he realized, once he had this waterproof camera that was wearable, if he turned it around, he could get a shot of himself inside the wave. It turned out that had never been done. And when it had been done, it was done later with very, very expensive long lens cameras or guys, you know, um, that are highly trained with, with digital SLRs in the water. And from that essence of that, he realized that actually there's new perspectives, new ways to capture great content. And over, over many years of, a, of sort of adapting uh, the versatility of the way you can mount the camera and the quality, you see what you see today, which is essentially any use case you can imagine uh, where you want to capture something sort of that, that people don't think had been done before can now be done with a GoPro. And it isn't just about turning it around on yourself, it's about having an ecosystem that allows you essentially to go out and lead a big life if that's what you want to do, whether it's hucking off a cliff or wingsuiting or surfing or just capturing the most magical moments of your life. A very simple example I'll give you just to maybe end to, on the point is Perfect. last year we launched um, a mount for a dog. In fact, we launched it just as we were going IPO. And I was on the, on the IPO roadshow, and people said, this thing will never catch off. Well, I, I would, if you go out there, some of the best footage that you've ever seen has been captured from the perspective of people's dogs. Because it's that affinity and that immersive quality that GoPro brings that people love. And you're right, they do associate it with a big life and doing great things. So we're very proud of that. Yes, I, and I think that really is how GoPro has disrupted things, is that they've changed the changed our perspective of uh, how we see the world and how we allow the world to ultimately to see us. Uh, do you have other examples uh, of ways that uh, GoPro has been disruptive and changed that perspective? Well, actually, I'll give you a couple of just on the digital imaging side. Um, firstly, GoPro absolutely changed uh, the way that people capture, as you said, and, and the perspective. And what it allowed is it allowed people to kind of have essentially professional-based content at consumer-based prices. So that's one thing. Mm -hmm. Just to kind of put it in perspective, um, for, for sub $500, you can have a 4K30 device, a uh, professional level quality device. And so one of the ways that we've also disrupted is, is actually into the professional arena. Often we'll be the second or third camera in the professional uh, photography uh, bag. And in fact, many, many um, uh, uh, shows, TV shows are now shot with GoPro. I'll give you an example. Any of you have seen The Deadliest Catch? That's a a show where they go out into Alaska and they, they're crab pot. That couldn't be done without GoPros because you wouldn't be putting twenty, thirty thousand dollar devices, you know, into the Bering Straits. If you, if any of you just saw The Martian, you saw that they're now using GoPros as part of that, as an example. So we've disrupted the professional market in a way because we've made it the barrier to entry and the cost very, very low. But I think there's a few other areas of disruption that we're really focused on. If you think about uh, the drone market, and uh, we can talk a little bit more about it. Drones before uh, video capture came along and, uh, and were inspired by the content, the type of stuff you talked about in Point Break, were really for sort of RC uh, you know, um, flyers and, and really enthusiast around flying. 
the minute someone put a GoPro on a drone, it kind of changed the way that we think about uh, consumer drones forever because it suddenly said that it's not so much about the flight, but it's about the type of perspectives and video you get. So that's an area we're very focused on. And, and I'd say the other one is um, when you look at spherical and 360, uh, 360 capture that we're now starting to see, the beginnings of virtual reality. So these are areas that we're very, very focused on. And why those disruptions are important is that they don't just cross into uh, consumer sort of interest and photography and, and documenting your life. They, they cross over into changing industries. And we start to see that with what's happening in the drone market, whether it's agriculture, whether it's helping um, folks at uh, local level make it easier to do jobs and, and things like fix bridges and so on. Uh, and the same thing I think what we're going to see with 360, the disruption you're going to see is a whole new way to tell stories, a whole new way to en envision your life in a much more immersive way. Just imagine in the future where you may not be able to afford to go to uh, an amazing theme park or uh, let's say into um, the African safari and you could literally have that full immersive experience. Uh, brought to you, or new forms of education, or new forms of entertainment. So these are big areas of focus for us in innovation. And so it's really interesting because you you started in a very consumer-centric way, focusing on you know the surfer and capturing these beautiful shots in Fiji or other remote locales. Uh, but as you talk about drones, as you talk about virtual reality, these have pretty large commercial applications. Whether it's uh, you know checking houses, real estate, whether it's checking bridges and other inspections, or on the virtual reality side, and w one of the worlds that I see in the future is as we go to book things, like we book a cruise, yeah. we'll walk the deck of that cruise, we'll go to the pool, we'll go to the, uh, the, the, the restaurant, we'll walk into the different cabins to get a feel for it. So there are pretty big commercial applications to this environment too. Do you feel like uh, there's a lot of opportunity in that arena as you start to expand? We do, but... Uh, to be clear, GoPro is uh, very, very focused on the consumer market. What we want to do is create great technology that's very easy to use, that allows you to capture things in whatever perspective you like. We're developing software that can help you manage that, edit that, and share that. And then we believe that those use cases uh, will trickle into the types of things that you're talking about. Uh, yeah, it's very tough to be sort of focused on consumer and, and enterprise. Uh, and small, medium business and do all of those things well. And I know it's a bit of an overloaded term, but we do live in a world of consumerization that's bled into all sorts of business applications. So we'll stay focused on the consumer uh, sort of use case, retail and, and sort of direct consumer business model. But we just see the, the, what we call the GoPro movement evolve in all aspects of business. Obviously, um, I talked about professional uh, you know, uh, cin cinematography as an obvious example, but it's flowing everywhere. You see, you just, you turn around and you see a news case, new use case where someone's using a GoPro. It could be in a commercial context or in a consumer context. Some of the interviews I've done here at CES with uh, reporters were using GoPros. Yeah. So they would film the, uh, the footage in, in, uh, with a GoPro. So it was interesting to see that change, and I haven't seen that necessarily in, in the past as well. What other things do you think start to get disrupted? I mean, it sounds like there's a tremendous amount of opportunity in, the, in these areas. What are the other narratives or points of view that get disrupted? Well, just to come back a little bit to drones, um, and one of the reasons we're so excited about joining the CTA and being part of that is that uh, one of the aspects of drones that I think is, is, is right, and it's maybe a generic theme of disruption in general. With every disruptive technology, uh, there's a fear of change. Um, in the case of drones, it, it's, there's a fear of privacy, um, but perhaps even more importantly, safety. You know, what if one of these hits someone? What if it falls out of the sky and so on? And so while we really are passionate about pushing the innovation, we want to do this in a way where we help educate, particularly policymakers, that it's also about um, uh, taking care of the consumer. Uh, we've been very heavily involved with the CTA, who's really sort of on the bleeding edge of, of leading both state, local, and, and federal policy around making sure that we do the right thing. Uh, and so while we're going to keep, keep pushing the envelope of what's possible with technology, we also want to work um, with a leading set of innovative companies, which is what we have in the, in the Innovation Council, and then really go drive the right changes. Because if you, if you don't do that and you don't bring people along, sometimes these disruptions that need to happen take too long, they get stalled and get pushed back. So sort of the three areas, just to uh, 
close the loop on your question, I think that we see as, as, as highly, so the next layer is a disruption, and there's still going to be disruption in digital imaging capture. Um, one area that still needs a ton of work and we're very focused on is really how do you document your life? How do you make it easier? Because it is a lot of work. It's a lot of work to go out there and capture, but then it's a lot of work to then say, how do I manage the best shot and so on? <clears throat> so we're very focused on uh, a set of software initiatives. But we also think that there's, there's a, a new form of storytelling out there. If you think about GoPro, you touched on it. You said it's almost a verb. Um, and we have a lot of people that associate their content with GoPro. GoPro is really about giving you that wow moment. Um, that's sort of the, probably the best company right now, I would say, in terms of driving quick, exciting, emotional entertainment that's um, sort of short form, unscripted, music overlaid content. So when we think about VR and we think about where that's going, we think you can tell new, new innovative stories. And whilst is that disruptive technology, I would argue yes, because all the pieces you have to bring together to make that possible so a user can do that, from the capture device through to the software. We made an acquisition of a company called Color, which is the leading edge stitching company in terms of bringing multiple cameras together to give you that 360 image really is quite disruptive in telling a whole new form of storytelling. And I think it'll actually change entertainment in the way that we think about it. And we're very focused on that era. Yeah, it's pretty awesome to think of, about GoPro doing what they did with, with consumer video capture in all of these new areas, in drones, in virtual reality. And there's tremendous amount of disruption still to be had. What are some of the Im impediments to some of this, this change and some of this disruption? What are the things holding back adoption? Yeah, there's a couple of things. One, one we touched on. Um, I wouldn't call them impediments, but they're sort of educational aspects uh, that you have to go through. Um, if you think about even at the base level, uh, in some ways, we call it action cams or POV and so on, and we touched on it. You know, there's sort of a legacy industry that said, no, the way that you capture imagery is you, you, you face it away from yourself. You don't point it at yourself. And, and there was a lot of resistance in the, in, in the industry even at the film, film industry level. And so part of Im an impediment, but also an opportunity, is that we work with the right bodies and make sure that we accelerate that and we don't have too much regulation and too many things that get in the way. So that's one aspect. I think the other aspect is that we're living in a world where everyone wants things faster, smaller, cheaper, but they never want to compromise quality. And so when we think about whether it's a VR capture or even what we're doing in pushing the envelope in terms of just overall capture, uh, there's technology limits that you have to go through. Um, sure. Battery life is a big one. And so we're always looking for new technologies to help accelerate that. And that costs R&D, and that costs time, and that costs focus. But that's a big area. So I, I don't look at them as, as pure impediments. I look at them just as more of execution, having the right strategy, and staying very true to what you believe in. So where are some other areas that you see uh, as ripe for disruption? You've talked a little bit about drones, and you, and, uh, you know what I hear from you, Tony, is that GoPro is a digital imaging company, right? They really are a, a disruptive company and focusing on disruption. Maybe you could talk a little bit about that, and, as well as yeah. where you see things uh, ripe for disruption. Yeah, uh, just circling back, I think, uh, firstly, we absolutely believe we're way more than a digital imaging or camera company. Um, the big breakthrough that's really going to sort of unlock the next layer of, of great creators is to create an end-to-end -end system where it's just that much easier to unlock your content and then create it easily. That being said, uh, one of the things that has made GoPro great is it's always led with its content. And we've always been very proud of keeping that premium and high quality. So one of the disruptions I would call innovations is finding that balance between automated, tech, uh, sort of au automated technologies but with a creative flair. Um, we have this today. We have a piece of software uh, uh, called GoPro Studio. And one of the things that we love is we have these templates. So if you love a piece of content, let's say the Point Break content, and that was a piece of GoPro original production, and your, your son loved it so much, and they wanted to make a video exactly like that, we should be able to give you that creative IP you put in your own footage, and then you have that feeling. So I would say that's an area that is um, really untapped and unexplored. And everyone would love to have this capability. It's complex, because you've sort of got to balance the, the nuances of 
easy algorithms to make it easy for you to do things, but at the same time, keeping that human creative flair. So that's an area we spend a lot of time on. Uh, I'd always so say that entertainment experience itself, um, mm -hmm. we're moving to a world, as many people know, uh, whether you call it cord cutting or cord shaving, where people want snackable, over-the-top um, experiences. And we have found and, and shown that uh, with GoPro, for example, the GoPro channel, it's the, it's the number one brand channel on YouTube today, or whether it's on Instagram and what we do there and the way that we share content, that people really want to consume these entertainment experiences, uh, but they want to do it in a different uh, way. They want to do it in a way that's more curated and more, uh, I think, they feel more connected to it. Uh, so, you know, the, the old days of sort of linear programming of entertainment are going to change. And we have a lot of thoughts and ideas around that. Um, one of the aspects for us is making sure that we can get enough content. Uh, and so we, we launched a couple of initiatives, one around uh, we have awards. And it, I would encourage everyone here to go look at some of the GoPro awards. If you see what uh, just, you know, not professionals, what people are doing and the type of creativity they have today, it's incredible, highly disruptive. We have a content licensing portal where people can then take that content and put that um, into their own uh, productions. And so what I'm really getting at is sort of one of the themes that we've talked about for a long time has been user-generated content. And people associate their content with GoPro. But I think there's a, a disruption coming where you can get to a professional level uh, of your own content. And so instead of that one thing that most people pay for in their lives, which is their wedding photography, you can pay a little bit of money and you can get ma magical moments that you want to hand down for generations and generations to come. And there's a lot of work we're doing in that area as well. So I know whenever my sons and I want to see footage, whether it's skiing, snowboarding, we always add GoPro to our, to our search term, whether it's yeah. YouTube or Google. We're always adding uh, you know, that, that, mon that, that additional term, GoPros to really help drive down into the type of footage that we want to see. Yeah, it's actually an amazing phenomenon, just to give you some, some stats. That, uh, the base premise of, the, of, of GoPro as a strategy is we lead with content. That content inspires you to hopefully go out and, and, and seek and discover what you can do with a GoPro. And then hopefully you go out and purchase a GoPro and you go and do that, and then you share it, and then you post it. And what you just talked about is you're talking about the search side. Um, but it's incredible that so many people associate their content every day. Something it's in the order of tens and tens of thousands of uploads a day, whether it's YouTube, Facebook, and so on, where people will say, this is my GoPro vacation, or my GoPro you know, first day at school with my, with my, you know, my uh, first grader, or my GoPro uh, Hawaii adventure. And so what's happened here is that people have become, have created an affinity with the type of content that we produce, and they want to be associated with it. And we keep driving that. Now, what's important for GoPro is when we produce content, we keep it a very high quality. Uh, and you become inspired. I mean, there's so many great uh, pieces of content out there um, that we all love. Right now, uh, you know, I would say the Danny McCaskill uh, shot of, uh, that he was in the Canary Islands, I'd encourage you to do it. It's gone over 10, 10 million views already and is going super viral. And that is just something that we're going to continue to focus heavily on. It's very exciting to see you paint the future of an environment where it's not just capturing the video footage, but it's also being able to do some, essentially some of the post-processing and, and being able to create a more professional experience from that video that, you, that you've caught. Yeah, we, we think about um, the world in, in really a, a very distinct set of pillars. Capture is a big part of it, and we, we absolutely have created an ecosystem of, of versatility so that you can lead the life you want to, and it doesn't feel like that camera is in the way of, of your experience. But as I mentioned, uh, manage, edit, and share are just as important. Because we know that when people share that content, that drives other people to be inspired. And by being inspired, they go out and lead bigger lives, which is really the underlying premise of what GoPro is about. But we know we also have to keep making that easier. Uh, we always look at new technologies, um, but we're also investing very heavily in that area. Because I think that's the next great area that everyone wants. Everyone wants their lives to be easier. They want to be more on the go, whether it's taking that quick shot and posting it to their favorite social network, or whether it's taking a little bit of time to curate and edit something that they're proud of, that they can um, you know, turn into a longer form piece of entertainment. So anything you would add here as we, as we uh, finish our interview? Any last thoughts on the future of GoPro or the future of disruption? 
you know, maybe just starting at the top level. Disruption is very important, uh, very important, uh, not just from a technology point of view, but what it can do to economies. And I know you, you focus a lot on this and now it, it, it's cha fundamentally changing people's lives. I think in GoPro, we have a very, very focused strategy around continuing to advance the forms of capture, making that software experience much easier and transforming entertainment. Um, you know, and we will focus heavily on things like virtual reality and, and um, residential uh, drones and so on. Uh, but I think what's a bigger story f uh, when you sort of take away from GoPro and disruption is that fundamentally we can help change the way that people document their lives. And at the end of the day, when you step back from all of this technology and all that we do, and you're sitting there, you know, we're sitting in our rocking chair or whatever on the porch. What's that one thing that everyone says, I wish I'd have had more time to actually document your life? And I think if we can do that and do that well, uh, you can be proud of what you do um, and at the same time disrupt it, industries and technology. So we're very happy with what we're doing at GoPro. And I do see how it changes the perspective. I, um, so there's 53 peaks in Colorado that are over 14,000 feet, and I've started to, to climb them all. Wow, congrats. Uh, I climbed one or two right before CES, and uh, one of the guys I climb with just got a GoPro from his girlfriend. And he said the problem is now she's going to see the most dangerous parts of every climb because it's the sections where he can't use his hands. And so he'll turn on the GoPro for those sections, and, and we'll you know get the edges where we're, where we're shimmying across the cliff or wherever we're at where he doesn't want to use his hands. And so it, it changes the perspective of not only what we're seeing and what others are seeing, but the entire dynamic of that, you know, that adventure. Yeah, I think uh, you hit right on the, sort of hit it on the head, which is, you know, at, at the, the base level, um, you know, video data is something that humans can process, but if you can make that become something that has an emotional, visceral, immersive connection, it can cross over into many, many other parts of your life. And GoPro has really done that in a way that I think is uh, not underestimated by us, but maybe by the broader industry at this moment. And we're going to continue to, to make sure that's a big part of our story. But talking to Tony Bates at GoPro makes me feel inspired, makes me want to go out and... Yeah, what are you going to go do, do now? Yeah, do something new and adventurous. And it, it really, to, to talk to you, Tony, and to see all of the areas that GoPro is, has disrupted, is disrupting, will disrupt, uh, the potential really is massive. And that's, uh, that's very exciting to see, whether it's drones, virtual reality, storytelling broadly, there's a tremendous amount of promise and a tremendous amount of disruption in uh, GoPro's future. I appreciate you coming and sharing that with us today. Yeah, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you.